fleece and pile fabrics. Super easy to sew. And you can get so creative with these fabrics. There's so many available out there. I made this fun coat and I used some great techniques on the Baby Lock Accolade Serger. We made mock ribbing. We did an ultra smooth edge. We used a flat fell and a flat lock. And we even did a fancy blanket stitch on the edge. Hey, join me. We're gonna make this Accolade take our fleece and make it a little bit more special. I'm Kathy. <laughs> this is Sewing Tech Talk. <laughs> so fleece and pile fabrics are everywhere. There's so much, it's a great selection and they're super easy to sew. So let's explore some techniques on the Baby Lock Accolade, which is an eighth thread serger which means that it can also do a cover stitch and it can also do an overlock stitch. And we're gonna use both of those today as we explore some fleece and pile fabric techniques. Now, neither of these fabrics ravel, okay? But we can use the serger to do some fun, fun stuff. I want to explore some techniques. And in previous videos, I've made like a lookbook. And in my lookbook, I've had given you different pages. And if you want to explore a technique before you do a project, it's a page where you can put it in a page protector, try the technique, and, um, and then you can just have that to say, oh, I need inspiration. I'm going to look in my lookbook. Now, the Baby Lock Accolade does 87 different stitch combinations, and that's not even counting the techniques. And the Accolade comes with a fabulous bundle. It comes with thread. It comes with an inspiration guide. It comes with a giant selection of extra accessory feet that really make this machine super useful. Now, I did a coat using some fleece and pile fabrics, and I want to show you some of the techniques I used in that coat because I think you might find them, even if you just use you one in your next project, it's going to be make it a little bit extra special. So, like I said, the, the serger does a cover stitch and an overlock stitch, and it can do them at the same time. I think it's the only machine that can, but imagine I'm doing a overlock stitch and a cover stitch, and I was, for example, putting this around the edge of my fleece. That would be fantastic. That would be a super easy technique to do. Now, when the machine comes with the inspiration guide, it has all kinds of information in there for you to be inspired and set the machine up for that. But let's explore some of the other ones. And a couple of them, well, the pages are gonna give you a little bit extra information. If you go get my handout, it's usually highlighted in blue down below in the description of the video. Download that, print it out, and explore some of these techniques. Now, first, let's what are we talk about what we're gonna do. Here's my coat. Now, when I do the overlock stitch, the overlock stitch, I've used that on the edge for what I call my ultra smooth edge. I've used some um, bathing suit fabric and it creates a super fun extra edge. It doesn't have to be bathing suit fabric. It could be any knit. We're gonna explore how to do that. You can use the serger, the cover stitch, for doing a flat fell seam, a mock flat fell seam, and it really compresses that fleece or pile fabric and gives you a great finish. I also can use that cover stitch to create what looks kind of like ribbing, but it gives the fleece that extra dimension. So you can buy the inexpensive fleece and make it fancy. You can also do what's called a flat lock, which means you can stitch the seam together, pull it open, and you can create a really fun flat edge. It's used in all kinds of athleisure wear. And you can even do, you can even do a blanket stitch. So let's explore some of these techniques on the machine. Now my machine right now is set up for a three thread wide overlock seam. And I'm gonna use that to do my ultra smooth finish. What I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use it to stitch the, the knit fabric on to the edge. Now I'm using the three thread wide because it's gonna fill up this edge and give it a really nice fun uh, feel on the edge of my binding as it were. Now neither of these fabrics ravel like I said, but I do cut myself an extra wide piece because it's a little bit easier to manipulate. 
The machine now is set up for a three thread wide, which means I have my thread in the upper looper, the lower looper, and in the overlock needle, this all the way over to the left. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch this fabric together and put it under there. The blade is up. So now you would probably use matching thread, but I'm using contrasting thread so that you can see what this stitch looks like. So there's my three thread wide, and you could certainly even just use this for a seam on your polar fleece fleece or your pile fabric. But why is it great? Well, it's extra stretchy. These fabrics do have stretch to them, so this, this stitch is not going to pop out when you do it in a seam. Now, how do we make this into a binding? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, pull it around to the back, and pull it over like that, and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. I'm going to use my sewing machine for that. Now, this serger also can do a chain stitch. I could totally switch the machine over and use a chain stitch for that as well. But I want to stitch this down with a cover stitch. We're going to explore that a little bit later. So I take it to the back, I stitch in the ditch, and I come to the back and I trim it. Through the magic of video, I've already started a sample. And once again, I used a contrasting thread so that you can see what I did. So I took that I like to gently curve the corner, which is a great way to do your corners. I came around the corner, I pulled it to the back, and I stitched it down on the sewing machine just using a regular straight stitch. Now I found a really fun foot for the sewing machine, and I'm not going to go into great detail, but oh my gosh, for the baby lock or brother sewing machines, this quilt binding foot rocks the house. So I use that to stitch this down because it rides over the one side. It's a bi-level foot, and so it rides over this, and it was super simple to get stitching in the ditch right along there. Now what I do is I come to the other side, and I'm just going to use some applique shears to trim off that edge really, really close. Oops. Let me get it so that you can see it, hopefully. Here we go. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to trim it really close, and that edge will actually technically technically be finished. So I can trim that edge really close, go all the way around, and I could be done. But what I want to do is I want to come a little bit later on and I want to do a cover stitch to cover the back of that edge. We're going to do a couple stitches before we do that, but let me now show you something that's really cool. Now I'm going to switch the Baby Lock Accolade over from a three thread wide to a flat lock seam. Okay, now this flat lock seam is a seam that we're going to pull it open and it's going to be totally flat. I can also use that to do that fun blanket stitch. Now in most sergers out there, you know what you have to do? You got to get your manual out, you got to read it, you got to completely re-thread the machine. <laughs> but a baby lock serger is pretty amazing because you don't necessarily have to re-thread it every time. Now the machine comes with a quick reference threading guide. And on the quick reference threading guide, it shows you where all the parts and pieces are. So for the three thread flat lock narrow, it shows me the total threading path there. I'm going to do a three thread flat lock wide. So in your handout, I have the instructions for that. But also, the machine comes with an inspiration guide. And this is all kinds of fun techniques that you can do on the machine. So here's the instructions for that blanket stitch that I told you about. It happens to be the same setup. But let me show you how I can quickly switch from one to the other. Are you ready? Now, when I look at my quick threading guide, I know that this thread that's coming down through here for the three thread overlock needs to come over here into this path. Do I have to re-thread? Not at all. All I'm going to do is I'm going to move that thread over. Take the thread out of its little slot and move it over to this slot.
Now, if I look at my quick threading guide, it tells me that I want my stitch selector to go down to D. That's the setting I use for that flat lock stitch. Now, I didn't have to rethread my whole machine. I am good to go. So let me show you that fun blanket stitch. It's really kind of a neat technique. So for the edge of my polar fleece, what I need is I'm going to stitch along the edge. Of course, I could put some fancy thread in here. The Baby Lock Accolade bundle comes with some Decora thread, which would look gorgeous in there. You also could use, this is some stretch bulk thread that also comes with it. This would look fantastic in here as well. And you would put that into the looper or in through the needle, wherever it looks the best for you to get the right effect that you're looking for. But we're just gonna use the threads that I have in there, regular serger threads. Here's the trick. You take some water soluble stabilizer. This dissolves away in water, but we're gonna use it to manipulate our stitch after we stitch it. So I've switched everything over. I moved my thread. I switched my stitch selector down to D because the quick threading guide told me to. Now let's just sew it. It looks a heck of a like, lot like that stitch that we just did, doesn't it? But here's the trick, watch. Use that stabilizer to pull the threads out and look at that fantastic blanket stitch. It was so easy to convert the machine over and it was so easy to stitch it. You could do this around the edge of any kind of a polar fleece or fleece garment that you wanted to. Now, you trim away this and just put it in water and everything else dissolves away. But what about that flat lock I was telling you about? Well, you can also do a flat lock on the, uh, just to put the two pieces of polar fleece together. And we're going to pull them apart just like we use that water soluble stabilizer. But I want to show you another cool trick. The Accolade comes with a great foot kit. And some of the feet, well, you can see I just did that stitch with the regular foot that comes on the machine. But sometimes you can use a specialty foot to really help you get exactly what you want. Now, this is the lace joining foot, and obviously this isn't lace, but I can set this guide to make sure that I'm feeding the fabric through in just the right way so I'm getting just the right edge that I'm stitching my two together. Now, I have your handout, which shows you basically all kinds of instructions for doing this and all kinds of really cool pictures, including the exact setting on the foot I used to create this flat lock. So this is what it looks like. Here's the flat lock. See how cool that looks? There's that ladder stitch on the back and here's that fancy decor thread on the front. Doesn't that look like a really neat dis seam? It makes your seams really stand out. So now let's stitch it. What to, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the machine, change off the foot. They just snap on and on like a regular sewing machine foot. I'm gonna snap this one on. And I'm gonna put my fabrics in there. Now, obviously I'm just using a small sample to go into my little handout samples, but for a regular seam, you'd just be putting the, the two pieces of fleece either right sides together or wrong sides together. And it tells you in the handout the different effects you would get for doing that. So now let's put the fabric in through the foot. We gotta slide it in there. Lower the presser foot. Now I'm gonna make sure everything comes over here. I can see it's good. Now all we have to do is stitch. Okay, it looks like a regular old seam, right? Well, when I pull it open, on the one side, I get those cool ladders on the other side. Imagine I've used decorative thread here. On the other side, I get that really neat effect. So that's the flat lock. I went from a regular three thread overlock stitch to a flat lock, just like that, and I got two techniques out of it.
Now, let's go and let's change the machine over to a cover stitch. I think I have to find all my parts and pieces. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my parts and pieces, we'll switch the machine over to a cover stitch, and I wanna show you uh, two or three more techniques so that you can make your, fold, your fleece or your pile fabrics really stand out. So I cleaned up my area a little bit and I got started on changing the machine over to a cover stitch. It's really very simple. Basically all I did is I took the needles from the overlock position here and I put them over here in the cover stitch position. Now it's three different places you can put the needles when you're doing a cover stitch because you can do what's called a triple cover and have a needle in each one of the different positions. But I chose a cover stitch wide, which means I have a needle in the left position and the extreme right position. Now we need to thread the cover stitch looper. In most sergers, that is really challenging, but in this machine, it's a self-threading serger. So basically, all I do is I tell the machine I want to thread, I turn the knob on the side till the machine clicks into place, and then I take my cover stitch looper thread, bring it on up and over, and I stick the end in the little threading port. Oops. Don't touch the button before you have the threading port. And then I just touch the threading port and voila, I am threaded. I'm going to take it into surging position. Now when I'm doing my cover stitch, I don't necessarily want that looper on the top, so I just turn it down. I turn the blade down by turning it into the lock position and I'm going to be stitching flat. So I'm going to remove this, which is the cutting blade cover and I'm going to put on the serger table and it basically just snaps right on in. And I'm ready to do my cover stitch, except I do need a foot. Now, like I said, the Baby Luck Accolade, the bundle comes with a great thing. It comes with 16 different feet, all the different feet and accessories that you need to do all kinds of fun stuff in this great little case. Look at how fun this is. Look at how great this is. Look at all the different accessories. And there's room for more, should you want to adopt some more. But it also comes with a great guide that tells you what all those different feet do. So not the everything that every foot does, because some foot does multiple stuff. So that's a great bonus that comes with the accolade. Now, we're set up for the cover stitch wide. Now let me show you that flat fell seam. We've already done a flat lock, but what we're going to do is a flat fell, which is, it's kind of a mock fat fell. So what I did is I did sew it on my sewing machine and I trimmed one inch of the seam very close to that sewing machine stitching. And then I trained trim the other side out, maybe about a quarter inch here and maybe about an eighth of an inch here. So when I open it on up, what's going to happen is I'm going to have that double stitch look. You'd have that on some of your more elegant sportswear. And on the back, it's going to completely cover that edge. Now here's the foot that comes with, one of the feet that comes in the, in the um, foot kit and it's the clear foot. And it's really gonna help me know that that left hand needle is gonna go right next to that seam. So I'm just gonna snap it on and put my fabric underneath so that I am sewing with that left needle right along that seam line and the right needle out. It's gonna cover that back edge. Now I need to close up my, my <laughs> my, my cover of my machine, and here we go. I'm going to stitch right along here. Now on the front of the foot, there's little tiny raised uh, little areas so that you can know where those needles are. You can actually, if you wanted to, you could draw a line in here with like a Sharpie to really help you see where that line is because the clear foot is really, really clear. But let's see how it looks like. Make sure you got your presser foot down. And uh, I think I want to stitch the length of the stitch length a little bit. Here we go. Oops, I got a little off. It's kind of hard to talk and sew at the same time. I did much better when I stopped talking.
So there's that cool flat fell seam. Look at how elegant that looks. Now let's look at the back. Here's the part that I did trim and you can see that covers it really nice. If I was using matching thread, this might almost make this garment reversible. So there's that. Now let's go back to that one clean finish edge that I talked about. Remember, I did the serger, I did the three thread overlock there. I took it to the sewing machine and I sewed it and I pulled it to the back and I trimmed it along the edge. Now, do you have to do that? You actually don't. I could just serge it with that cover stitch along here and then trim it. Let me show you what that looks like. This clear foot's really going to help me do this as well because I want one needle on the binding and the other needle on the polar fleece. Another really elegant edge. Look at how pretty that looks. With that stitching there, remember I would use matching thread, the stitching there. On the back, I would now come in on the back and now I would trim it really close to that cover stitch looper on the back. But if I'd sewn it on my sewing machine, I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm just going to make sure I absolutely cover that edge. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to use the notch on the front of the foot to make sure that the edge, the seam line of this binding is right smack dab in the middle when I'm doing my cover stitch. Oh my gosh, now that's a really pretty edge as well. Look at how pretty that is. Now remember, this could be in matching thread, and I could have even used a narrower cover stitch, because if I put that needle over to the left, I would get a narrower cover stitch. And that might look a little bit more elegant on this edge. Now there's another fun thing that you can do when you're stitching your polar fleece, is you can add some texture to it. Now, Polar fleece comes in oh, all kinds of different, you can get it printed, you can get it embossed, you can get all kinds of fun stuff with it. But, you know, the less expensive polar fleece doesn't necessarily come that way. What if you want to add a little bit of fun texture to it? When I made my coat, that's what I did to this polar fleece that I used on the collar. See how cool this texture adds on there? Now on the back, if I wanted to use the back, I totally could. I used that bulk stretch thread in a pretty yellow color to add a really neat effect on the back. So here's what it looks like with just that one effect on the collar, on the front. It looks like it's just a little bit more fancy. Now, all I'm going to do when I do that is I'm just going to stitch the, the cover stitch as I stitch over the top of the fabric. Now, polar fleece or fleece comes in all kinds of different weights. It comes thicker like this yellow piece that I have here. You can also get a thinner version. Now the thinner version might be a great option when you're doing a collar on a, say, a project like a jacket. And if I'm using this ribbing technique on there, it would really add a really fun effect. I'm going to use the thinner stuff, maybe because I'm doubling it. Maybe if I live in Minnesota, I'm going to use the thick stuff. So let's try that effect when we're doing it on the thicker. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So basically, I'm still just using that cover stitch. Now, if I want this to be a little bit pulled up to get a little bit of a raised effect, I can do that on my serger. Over here on the side, I have a little dial where the cover stitch looper thread comes through. Now on this dial, basically, I'm going to turn it from cover stitch and I'm going to go where I have a, some additional bars on the side. Now that just pulls that bottom thread in, and let's see if I get a little bit more puff. I'm basically also just going to use the edge of the foot to help me space out these stitches. So I'm going to put the edge of the foot right against that one thread, and let's see if I get a slightly different effect. Well, 
Well, I don't know if you can tell, but it really pulled that up and it gave it a little bit more of a puff. Now, let's see what we get if we use the thinner polar fleece. I bet you I get a slightly different effect. Oh my goodness, look at how that popped up that ridge. <laughs> that would really look elegant if I'm using matching thread and I did a whole bunch of different ridges along the whole edge of my fleece. Now do it before you cut out the pattern piece because it's going to shrink it up a little bit. But this would be a really, really, really cool effect. So what have we done? We've done some mock ribbing. We've made a really smooth edge. We've done a flat lock seam. We've done a flat fell seam. And we also did that really cool blanket stitch. Now there's one other little mm, fleece trick that I want to show you. And surprisingly, it doesn't involve a serger and it doesn't involve a sewing machine. So I'll be right back. I'm going to set up and I want to show you something that's kind of different and kind of cool and I'll be right back. <laughs> now I promised you one more technique that doesn't involve a sewing machine or a serger. Now you know you don't necessarily have to iron your polar fleece but if you do you can emboss it. Look at how fun this is. Now here's a couple samples that I made and I used a old wooden spool, a rubber band, and my iron and I kind of compressed the fleece. Now I've taken these, I've actually put them through the wash and it stays. Now of course you're going to want to test your fleece, your iron, your temperature on a scrap but basically all you do is you take it on a wooden form. Now you baby you have other wooden forms. I'm just using a spool. You take it and you bring your iron in and what you're going to do is you're going to press down on the top. Now the temperature right now I have mine set oh maybe a little bit more than halfway on my iron but you do want to be careful and do a test. All you do is you take your iron and you press it down and you press it down and you got to make the face and ah. What happens is you're going to emboss your fleece. You're going to take those polyester fibers and you're going to pull them down and kind of smash them and kind of melt them together just a little bit. And what you end up with is something that's pretty cool. I think I'm going to make my coat kind of polka dot. This coat's going to be the fanciest co fleece coat I've ever had. So thank you for staying with me today. I hope you agree that the accolade gives you all kinds of choices, not just on this fabric, but all of your sewing, quilting, home decor projects. It's a great machine. I'm going to send it off to George. He's going to tell you more about the machine and the awesome bundle, all the goodies that come with your accolade that make this serger pretty darn good. Thanks, Kathy. That was an incredible presentation, as always. You know, a serger can truly cut your sewing time by half. But so often, sergers are difficult to use, so you don't want to go to your serger. You try to do everything on your sewing machine. Now, Babylock invented the serger back in 1967, and they were the first to incorporate air threading. The Babylock Accolade actually has motorized threading that threads all the loopers with a burst of air. Plus, it has automatic thread delivery. That means there's no tension. So I can use it on all different weights of uh, fabric, from denim to knit fabric to sheer fabric. I can work with thicker threads. I can work with woolly th well, nylon thread. All these different threads, all these different fabrics without ever adjusting t the tension. And that's what's truly amazing. Now this serger is an eight thread serger. So it actually is a, a serger and a cover hem all in one. Now I can use all eight threads at one time to work with heavy fabric or decorative fabric or ruffling. But I also can do uh, a cover hem, which is what you see in a lot of active wear on very stretchy fabric, also for home deck. But it truly has everything. And it's the easiest to use because you never have to adjust the tension. Again, with all the threads, all the fabrics, you never have to adjust it. Now, the Baby Lock Accolade, uh, we have a special package where it has a total retail value of $64.99. But right now, it's on sale for $39.99. We have interest-free payments of under $167 a month. We're offering free shipping across the country.
But wait, for a limited time, we're offering a special bonus. Included with the Baby Lock Accolade is a 16-piece accessory kit that has all kinds of feet like this binder feet or belt loop foot, the ruffling foot, also a foot that allow you to sew over a wire to make your own ribbon. Uh, you also can do a sewing over beads and pearls. Also, there's one for sewing lace and many others. That's all included. Plus, we're including the inspirational guide, which is a step-by-step color book that walks you through every function, assuming you know nothing and gives you all the information you need. We're including several thread collections, including this Decora box, which has 12 weight rayon thread, which is gorgeous on decorative edges for uh, your different uh, two thread or three thread uh, decorative application. Plus, we're including a membership to Love and Knowledge that will show you all kinds of wonderful techniques and training on this machine. All this is included for under $167 a month, interest-free, or $39.99 if you want to pay for it. But don't wait. This is a limited offer. Click on the link uh, to order this machine or give us a call at 1-800-865-9664. Bye for now.